and very soon we are going to see the king. Let's sing together. see the king we're glad you're here this morning we welcome you and thank you for being a part of us this morning the lord has blessed us and brought us here and has something very special for us so we open our hearts to worship him we've got some people to add to our prayer list and we want to uh, take a moment here in just a moment to to pray uh, remember sue bishop sue's getting better things are looking up for her and so you want to remember her. Jerry Fisher is in the nursing home uh, for rehab. And she will probably, hopefully, this coming week or so, she'll be able to go back home. So you keep praying for uh, Jerry. And then Mike Brantley, this is Cora Ferguson's son, uh, had a biopsy this past Wednesday. And we'll be hopefully hearing from that uh, this coming week. So you be sure and pray for those and ask the Lord to bless them. But... This morning, we want to remember that our schools began this Wednesday. And it's uh, important that you and I pray for those who are a part of the schools. And, and it's kind of like last year, and then we come into this year, and we've got so many things up in the air. And we just, folks, we need to start praying that God will just put everything back down where it belongs. And that we go to school and, and we don't have to watch a screen and uh, we can interact and we can be what God intended for us to be in our school system. So you, we need to pray. We've got uh, Kelly Blue is it, uh, in our school system and Stephanie Parks is in our school system. And Tanya's got about... 9,000 schools she's got to take care of, <laughs> whatever that is, I don't know, region sounds like a lot to me, but uh, there's, there's a lot, and she's, she'll be getting uh, with region 16, so you want to pray for her, she helps give guidance in, uh, during that time, and uh, we want to remember her, who else in our school system, I miss somebody, where, who's pointing? Y'all think I can hear you, don't you? <laughs> don't let me miss somebody. Shout it out. We good? Did I get them? All right. Okay, we need to remember to pray for uh, those in our school system. Now, last week, I, I mentioned Madison Parks, and Madison got moved uh, to Weatherford, and, and everything is settling in, and, and she starts a school tomorrow. And then Lacey Blue leaves Tuesday, Tuesday for Hardin Simmons in Abilene. And she is all set and ready to go and her mom is ready to get rid of her and <laughs> all of these, these good things. No, we know better than that. But we want you to know, Lacey, you're, we're proud of you. We're proud of your accomplishments. We're proud of what you've done. And I hope you won't forget us, okay? Come back and sing every so often, okay? You're a whole lot prettier than Andy, so we want you to come back all right, and sing for us, okay? All right. And you want to congratulate Lacey. And we're going to pray for her, too, as you make this transition. And it's all going to be good. The Lord's going to bless it. and. Uh, going to bless all of our, our school system. And so we want to, as we pray this morning, we want to pray for all of those that are involved in our school system and, and then for our kids as they go back to school. 
and Lacey as she goes to college and Madison as she's in college and so many others. We just need to pray for these folks and uh, just ask the Lord to minister and, and bless them, okay? Huh? Thank you. I got it. Kai Parnell, and I forgot that. Thank you all. Kai has gone, she's going to WT, right? All right. So let's, re let's remember to pray for Kai. Pray for the school. Kai's going. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. His daddy said yes. I saw that. I can see that. Okay. All right. So we've, we've, got, we've got the students we need to pray for. We've got teachers we need to pray for. The school system and those a part of that system, we just want to pray and ask God to bless uh, in our school system. So I hope you'll join me in this prayer. Let's bow together and let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just give you praise and thanks for the privilege to be in your presence. Father, to love you and to thank you, Father, for who you are. And Lord, all the things that you've blessed us with. Father, we pray for these that we've mentioned who are in need and in sickness. Father, we pray for Sue. Uh, Lord, that you continue to heal and strengthen her. Father, we pray for Mike Brantley for good results, Father, from... Uh, his uh, test and we pray lord that you would bring healing and strength to him as well lord i pray for jerry fisher lord i pray that you would touch her and and bless her and raise her up and father we continue to pray for uh brian frost lord i, I pray that you touch and heal his body father and and bless him in a very special way and and touch him and keep him close to you father and now lord i just uh, lift up our school system here in pampa uh, Father, I pray for our teachers, Kelly, I lift her to you, and Stephanie, Father, asking you, Father, to bless them as they begin this year. Father, guide them, may you protect them. Father, I pray that you give them the wisdom and discernment, Lord, that they need. And Father, we pray that you will bless all of those in our schools, all of our teachers, uh, all of those who are, are part of the staffs in the school. And uh, Father, I pray for our administration, how we pray, Father, that you give them wisdom and, and understanding. Lord, we pray that you bring these, these students together. Father, I pray for Lacey as she goes to Abilene Tuesday. I pray, Lord, that you open every door for her, Father, and, and things can be blessed in her life. And, Father, we ask that you minister to her while she's there. We lift Madison again to you, Father, and pray that you just bless her as she's adjusting. And, Lord, we pray for Kai as he begins uh, his uh, college years. And pray, Father, that you just work in, their, in his life. And, and, Lord, bless and keep him uh, very close to you. Father, we pray for Tanya, Lord, and the leadership that she provides, and we ask, Lord, that you just uh, take her, Father, and that you give her wisdom and understanding, and Lord, that you bless her in these days ahead as she begins this new adventure, Father, but Lord, uh, as she uh, begins to follow you uh, in the direction that you'd have her to go. And Lord, we, we pray that uh, all of our schools, Lord, will be blessed during this time, but Father, we've got so much going on. Lord, and once again, uh, we're being threatened with this virus. And, uh, Father, we just ask you, Father, please, uh, in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask that you just take this thing from us and, and move it away. Father, that our kids can go to school, Lord, that they can learn and fellowship and grow together. And, Father, we're praying that you would be victorious and overcome that for us. And we just give you praise and thanks, Father, for what you're going to do. Now, Lord, we pray for your blessings in this service today. Speak to our hearts, Father, and bless us in all that we say and do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're glad you're here. We welcome you and we thank you for being a part of us today. Uh, if you're our guest, on the inside of your worship folder, there's a portion that says welcome. Fill that out for us. Put it in the offering plate uh, when it comes by in just a moment. Right now, we want to just greet you and hug your neck. So let's stand together and love somebody in the name of the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to the Sunday morning worship service of Central Baptist Church. I'm Norman Rushing. I'm the pastor of the church. We're glad that you're a part of us. We're so thankful that you're here with us today, and, and we appreciate you uh, being a part of us and sharing 
uh, our worship services with us. Our people are moving about. They're greeting each other. And we just have a, a greeting for you. We want to shake your hand. We want to hug your neck. We want to tell you we love you in the Lord. And I hope that if there's a time that you can come and worship with us, we'd love to have you and come and be a part of the fellowship of God's people as we gather together. We appreciate so much those who listen to us by radio, those that watch us on Facebook. Uh, what a great joy it is to have you to be a part of us. I encourage you to pray for us and just trust the Lord to bless us in a very special way. If you're working today, God bless you. We pray the Lord will minister to you and, and take care of you today uh, while you're on your job. We appreciate you worshiping with us, and I hope that you'll invite somebody else uh, to worship with us as well. In just a moment, I want you to take your Bible. We're going to be in Revelation 22, the last two verses, the last two verses, 20 and 21 of that 22nd chapter is the last two verses uh, in what we call our Bible. So we're going to see what that says to us, and it's very important to us because, folks, there is coming a day when Jesus will come again, and that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, as Jesus himself said, certainly, suddenly, I'm coming. And John said, come on, Lord, we're ready. And I know that there's something there for us today. So you have your Bible ready. Revelation 22, the last two verses of the book. So you have them ready. And let's, let's read those together. And let's see what God has to say to us. Sing the songs with us. You're going to be blessed today. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. We love you in the Lord. Y'all sing with me as you find your seats. Love somebody in the name of the Lord. Greet your neighbor with a smile. Let the love of Christ come shining through as you're walking down the aisle. For loving one another is the way of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, all are we. Washed in the blood and grounded in the word, living in salvation full and Amen. As you find your seats, go ahead and ha have a seat. Let's sing together. One day when heaven was filled with his praises. Let's sing together. One day. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he, verse 2. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on the tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sin, my Redeemer is he. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Seal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. Living he loved me, dying. Far away, 
rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day one day the trumpet will sound for his coming one day the skies with his glories will shine wonderful day my beloved one bringing glorious savior this jesus is mine living he loved me dying thank you lord for your love that you show each day to us for your blessings lord but lord i thank you for christ and lord i just thank you that i just pray that today all that we do in this service is just to lift up and glorify the lord in in the words that are preached and lord in this offering that is taken i just you pray that it's used to your glory pray these things in jesus name amen is empty no more traffic in the streets all the builders tools are silent no more time to harvest wheat busy housewives cease their labors in the courtroom no debate work on earth is all suspended as the king comes through the gate happy faces line the hallways those whose lives have been redeemed broken homes that he has mended those from Little children and the aged hand in hand stand all the clothes who were tired, crippled, broken, ruined, clad in garments white as snow. I can hear the chariots rumble, I can see the marching throng. The flurry of God's trumpet spells the end of sin and wrong. Regal robes are now unfolding, heaven's grandstands all in place, heaven's 
choir is now assembled to start to sing amazing grace. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding and now his face I see. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Sing that with me. Oh, the King is coming. The King coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Bible and join me. Revelation 22. Revelation 22. Shouldn't be hard to find. Just skip the concordance and we're right there. All right. I want you to look with me now in the last two verses of Revelation 22, which is also the last two verses of what we know of as the Bible. Verse, 21, verse 20, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And with those words, John watches as his beloved friend, Savior, closes the curtain on what we have been shown as the revelation. We've come to the end. And we sit here in, in this building and we have gone through this book of Revelation, except for two chapters, and I had forgot them, but the two chapters deal with the churches, the seven churches. Beginning in, in uh, chapter 4, we move forward into what we, we call, and what the Scripture teaches us, is the tribulation period. It is the time when God is going to bring the nation of Israel to him, there will be punishment upon Israel, but that nation will be brought to God. It doesn't mean that all of the Jewish people will be saved. What it means is, is that God will not forget the promise that he made to Israel. And so the nation of Israel is going to be brought through that tribulation, and the people of uh, the Jews, Gentiles alike, are going to be brought, some of them to Christ, many of them are going to reject him. We come to that conclusion of the Great Tribulation, the defeat of the Antichrist, the false prophet, cast them into hell. Satan has been cast into hell. The millennial reign has taken place, that thousand-year reign of Christ, as he rules over all the world. The new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem, all of it has come down, and we will live 
for eternity, the Bible is complete. There's an eeriness there. It's over. What we know today is done. It's over. Well, we just heard about the song that they sang there a moment ago. You know, you know when it begins, uh, there's, there's nobody in the marketplace. There's no one farming. Housewives, there, there's no uh, work that they're doing. All of a sudden, there is this eerie quietness that settles over us. Because for the first time, we hear the words, the end. And we're not talking about the end of a book. We're talking about the end of all the ages. Everything that you've known upon this earth, it's over. It's done. It'll no longer be like this. I, I just could almost imagine as I was uh, doing this to say to you, we have finished the book of Revelation and everybody would say, yay. I haven't understood a word he said for the last ever how many weeks. Because I don't understand the book. I don't understand what the, all of those things mean. I don't understand all that they're trying to say and everything they're trying to do. So I, just, I can just dismiss that. Let's move on to something else. But folks, you cannot deny in the world that we live in now, that for every one of us, there comes an end. There comes an end to many things that, that we do, and even though we don't understand it, we must put ourselves in a position of trying to bring together just exactly what this book is really all about. Because you see, when we come to the end, God's redemptive plan has been put in motion and it's come to this dramatic end as Christ closes the curtain that John is looking and he's seeing all of those things that he saw in heaven and then all of a sudden it comes back together. Boom. There's one thing left. Are you hearing me? When you read this scripture and you put all of this together, please understand this. Everything that Revelation presents to us is going to take place. And all of that is going to happen. And it's going to take place in the twinkling of an eye. The only thing that is left right now for Revelation to be in motion the only thing that's left is the rapture of the church. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. The rapture is imminent. There's no time frame. There's nothing that indicates to us that signs have to be fulfilled before the rapture will take place. The rapture will come just like that. We'll be just like in the days of Noah. In those days of Noah, they walked the streets and they paid no attention to the things of God because Noah's building this great big boat and they pay no attention to him. They sure don't pay any attention to God and the very same thing is going on now. So the only thing left is the rapture. And when the rapture takes place, we're going to see God's redemptive plan put into motion for the last time. As we started in this book, we found out the theme of the book. The theme of the book is Revelation 1-1. Somebody says, what's this book all about? Revelation 1-1. You take them to that verse and you can explain this is what Revelation is about. And it's in the first few words. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That's it. That is the theme of the book. Everything is going to point to Jesus Christ. But the crux of the book, when you put everything together, is in verse 7 of chapter 1. Verse 7 says, and every, and every eye shall behold him. 
He is going to come with the clouds and every eye will see him. Everyone will see Jesus as he returns. The climax of the book, we just read those two verses. But in, there's three different verses in this 22nd chapter, and, you, and you've seen them. Three verses that tell us what the climax of the book is. In verse 7, Behold, I come quickly. In verse 12, Behold, I come quickly. Verse 20, Surely, I come quickly. And who said those three things? Jesus did. Jesus did. So what he says to us is this. I am coming again. Suddenly, certainly, Jesus Christ is going to return to this earth, but he will come in his time. Now John's response to this has been such kind of a feel-good thing for us, makes us feel better about ourselves. Because what John said was, and, and really you can take out this even so, and you can put in the word yes or, or something along that line. But here's what John said. Jesus said, amen, I come quickly. John said, amen, come Lord Jesus. When we get afraid, when troubles are arising, when things are happening, and different things are going on. And, and we look around our world and we see all these things that are taking place. One of the things that we like to say is, I'm ready for the Lord to come. And then sometimes we'll use this verse, even so come Lord Jesus. And it sounds good to us. But now I want you to be real, 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 real honest with yourself. Do you really mean even so come Lord Jesus? I'm ready, Lord. Even so, come. No matter what is, say, what is taking place, please come, Lord. Are we really, really ready for that? See, what I want you to understand about this book of Revelation is this. It doesn't matter ready or not. That's not what we do. We must prepare ourselves spiritually because we don't know when that's coming. And so we must. Focus our attention upon Jesus and know that he is coming again. Am I ready to stand in his presence? Am I ready for all of this to be over? Am I ready for those things that are happening around us today? Now, this visible return is the completion of what God intends for the human race. It's going to bring it to an end as to what God had intended for us. The end will come. Christ will return. Everybody's going to see him. The judgment is going to take place. So can we say what John said? Jesus said, John, and I, I, like to, I like to picture it as John and Jesus talking. And John looks up and he sees the curtain coming close. Here's Jesus. He's in heaven. John's here on Patmos. And he's looking up. And Jesus is standing here. And things are beginning to shut down. And Jesus looks at John for the last time, and he smiles at him, and he said, I'm coming quick, John. I'm going to be there before you know it. And John looks up, and he smiles back at him, and he said, come on, Lord. Just come. Come on, Lord. I'm ready for that time. So if you and I want to be able to say, Yes, spiritually, I'm prepared for that. And that's what you and I have to make sure of today. Then we can say, and I think it should, it should be better like this. Then it, we could say, even so come in the fullness of your time. You see, he comes on his timing. It's not our timing. We like to think when things are going wrong, we can say, okay, Lord, come. But that's not what God does. If you read in Galatians 4.4 4, that talks about the incarnation of Jesus when he was born, Galatians 4.4, 4, Paul said that, that God spoke and said, and in the fullness of time, Jesus came. When the world was ready, when God was ready, when everything was ready, Jesus was born in this world for me and you. But he came on his time. And so he says, I'm coming. Amen, John. I'm coming quickly. Yes, John said. 
yet. What does that mean? If we tell, we say, Lord, I'm ready for you to come on your time. Because, folks, we cannot know God's time. There's no way that you and I can understand the timing of God. But there is one thing we can understand. We can understand the focus of God on what's going on here so that we can prepare ourselves and know that we must be ready for what's happening. You see, the focus of the end time. And many times people will say, well, when I read Revelation, I look for when is this going to happen? What's going to take place here? What are they going to do about this? What are they going to do here? What are they going to do that? Folks, let me tell you what the focus of the book of Revelation is. The, book of, uh, the focus of the book is on who and why. Who's coming? Who's coming? Jesus is. Why? Why? So that he can bring mankind back to what God intended for mankind to be. He wants this thing back just exactly as it was in the garden. Just like he had it built. But when sin entered in, he moved man out. Now he's got to bring all of this back together. So that we can be just exactly like he intended for us to be. And every part of the doctrine of the return. Every part of the doctrine of the end time eschatology, revelation, every part of that magnifies Jesus Christ. Now, think about it for a moment. In Revelation 1.1, we read that a moment ago. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Everything is fixed upon Him. And then we move to chapter 5 and verse 12. And what does it say? Worthy is the Lamb that is slain. Worthy is that lamb who is none other than Jesus Christ. Worthy is that lamb. And then what do we read? Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. He comes riding on this white horse. He comes riding down and written on his thigh are the words, King of kings and Lord of lords. The focus of the book of Revelation is on Jesus Christ. The focus of the end time is on Jesus Christ and the reason that He is coming to us. Every part of it. You can hear Jesus as He speaks back in the, uh, the ministry with his, with his disciples at that particular time. In chapter 24 of Matthew, Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in My name, saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. Do you understand that Peter and Paul and even Jesus told us that there would be false prophets, false preachers, false teachers that will arise in that last day. And they will present themselves as the true knowledge of God. And they will fall just a little bit short sometimes. Some even go to the point of saying that I am the Christ. But they present themselves as the Christ. And Jesus said, pay no attention to them because of what they do. Many will come in my name. I am the Christ. They'll deceive many. You'll hear, now notice, you'll hear of wars, rumors of wars. Don't be troubled. These things must come to pass. The end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Famines. Pestilences. Earthquakes. In different places. He said, all of these things are the beginning of sorrows. All of those things are wrapped up in the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Chapter 6 of Revelation. All of those things will come riding in. Everything that precedes Christ. We see it around us every day. The West Coast is burning up, is it not? Washington, Oregon, California especially. On up into Montana. The fires are raging. The fires are burning. Earthquakes are happening. Our earth is being shaken. It's being, it's being rattled every time we turn around. Everything is happening. There's famine all over this world. Pestilences are arising. Did not Jesus say these are the things that will take place? Political deception it happens to us all the time. It isn't amazing that we have put the men and women put their hand on the Bible and say, I, I promised and I swear that I'll do everything that I can, so help me God, and then turn around and lie to us. It happens. And no matter what party you're a part of, it happens from every party. We lie to protect ourselves and to give us what we need. But then Jesus is going to come. And why? 
so that he can take this present world order and bring it to an end. And when he brings it to an end, then he gives to his church everything that's new, the bride. The bride receives the new, the new earth, the new heaven, the new Jerusalem. And there we shall live and we will be with him. That's what the focus of all of this is about. We can't understand it all. But what we have to do is keep our mind on the word of God. Now, some people will say, well, you know, when I was saved, that's the second coming. Because Jesus came to live in me. Folks, when you're saved, yes, Jesus comes to live in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's not the second coming of Christ. That's not what the scripture teaches us. Some people will say, you know, when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, that was the second coming. Because God is the Holy Spirit and he came down. And so there you go. That's the second coming. The coming of the Spirit at Pentecost was the birth of what we know of as the church. And the power of the Holy Spirit that is to lead and to guide us as we go forth and bring forth the church in our nation today. Jesus is in us, but the Spirit is there just so that he can be the guarantee to us. The Holy Spirit has come to teach us, to guide us, to empower us, to bring glory to Jesus. That's why he's there. And then there was a, there was a doctrine, what we used to call post-millennial Postmillennial said this, that the world is going to take the gospel and we will take the gospel to the entire world and all of a sudden everybody on the world is going to be changed and they're going to be saved and the world will just get better and better and better and better and then when it gets to the point that it is so good, Jesus is going to come and that's going to be the end of it. Well, folks, we've been presenting the gospel around this world for years and years and years, and nothing is changing. Have you noticed that? Sin is still rampant. Sin is still running away. Ask the missionaries. I understand there are people being saved daily as we're taking the gospel. I'm not saying quit it. I'm saying that's not what you and I know of as the second coming of Christ. Because it's not going to get better. Things are going to continue just like they are. And then some people say, well, when I die, that's the second coming. No. When you die, you're dead. Death is not the second coming. Death is what happens to us because there's sin in the world. You sin and I sin. Adam sinned. Eve sinned. We all sin. We've all come short of the glory of God. Death is not the second coming of Jesus. Well, when the rapture comes, that's the second coming. No, it's not. The rapture is a separate thing. He's coming for the church, and he'll take the church out. But when every eye sees him, you see, when the rapture comes, not every eye is going to see him. The church will see him. Okay? The church will see him. The trumpets will sound. That's just like the beginning of that song. The trumpets are going to sound. Well, the trumpets sound at the rapture. Okay? Not the second coming. The rapture. We'll hear the trumpets. And we'll go, boom. In twinkling of an eye. We'll be out of here. That's not the second coming. Because he's going to come again at the end of the tribulation. The second coming of Jesus Christ. Don't spiritualize this, folks. Realize this. The Lord Jesus Christ himself is going to come to this earth. He's coming visibly, and every eye will see him. That's what it says to us. Every eye will see him, and who's they going to see? who are they going to see? They're going to see Jesus Christ. Every eye will see him. Verse 7, chapter 1. But look at Acts 1 and verse 11. Jesus, there on the Mount of Olives, there he stands, He's talking to his disciples. You'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth. Go forth. Take the Spirit. Go spread the gospel. Build the church is what he told them. And then he stepped away from them and he stood and he looked at them and he parted. He began to ascend and he rose up into the clouds and the clouds became like that chariot that surrounded him and took him and brought, took him on forth into heaven. All of a sudden, the disciples are looking, and he's out of their sight. And then they're rocked. Boom, boom. 
You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up in the heaven? Now, I want you to hear this same Jesus will, you've seen go up into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. And here's the good part about that. The disciples stood there and watched him go up. But folks, we're going to watch him step down. And when he steps down, he's coming for us. He's going to take his children and he's going to take them home. Who is it? It's the one who was born in Bethlehem's stable. Who is it? It's the 12-year-old that sat with the scholars at that particular day and confounded them by the questions that he asked. Who is this? He is the one that healed the uh, lame man. He is the one that never preached a funeral. He just brought them back to life, put them back on their feet, and sent them forth. He is the one that brought them water to drink, spiritual water as well as physical water. He's the one that uh, reached out and and healed those that, that needed healing. He's the one that took his cross and took it up Calvary's hill and there died for my sins and yours. He's the one that rolled the stone away from the grave and he walked out of that grave ever to live again as the son of God, God himself, almighty God. He walked out of that grave and he ascended back into heaven from his disciples and he stands now to intercede for us and to pray for us and to stand there for us and everything that we need. He is there to watch over us and he stands in defense of us when Satan accuses us of the sin that's in our life. Who is he? He is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the one you're going to see. That's the one that is going to come down. He's going to restore this earth to its original destiny, the new earth. He's going to restore it, and he's going to give that destiny to us, because who are we? We are those that God made to fellowship with him. He walked with Adam in the cool of the garden. He wanted to fellowship, and he did fellowship with Adam until Adam sinned and turned his way from God. You and I have sinned, but God wants to fellowship with us, and that's just exactly what he's going to do. We'll be like him. We'll see him as he is in the coronation of the salvation that he, and I, that he brought to me and you. He's coming, but he's coming in the fullness of his time, and it's going to be the same Jesus that ascended into heaven. Even so come. In the victory of your resurrection. He said. Jesus said. I come. John said. Come Lord. You see the first time that he came. He came in, in shame. You know we forget about the fact. That when they hung Jesus on the cross. They hung him naked. Humiliating him. That ought to break your heart. Our Savior was stripped. And they hung him on that cross. In shame, he died as some common thief that they tried to portray, as someone who deserved this thing called death. And he died for me and you. He came in shame the first time, but folks, when he returns again, he's coming back in all of his splendor, his glory. Shekinah glory. We will see him as he is. The first time he came was to redeem us on Calvary's cross. The next time he comes, he's going to reign. The first time he came here was to serve us. The next time he comes, he's going to be sovereign over all of this world. He will return. He will return as King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is coming to steal the storms that are in our lives. I mentioned to you last week. Uh, Matthew 24, 27, talking about the lightning flashing from the east to the west. And I I meant to tell you something, and then I got going on something else, and and I didn't bring it in. But I want you to understand something, especially for us. Now, I know there are times that the lightning, lightning's in the east, and it will move west, but that's not very common around here. But remember this. Meteorologists have, have said this. Uh, and, and I've read about it over the years. But they say that once you see the lightning in the east, the storm is over. As the lightning from the east to the west. We sit 
in the middle of the storm of life. And Jesus Christ is going to come. And when he comes, he is going to remove us from that storm. He's going to still the storm and the storm will be over. His saints will be fully sanctified by the Spirit of God. Made holy by that Spirit of God. Changing us into who we should be. Fulfilling the destiny of those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. He came to supply the ground of reconciliation. And we've learned in our study on Wednesday night, reconciliation is not something that you and I do. Reconciliation is what God does. God reconciles himself to us. We don't reconcile ourselves to him because we have nothing to bring. He reconciles himself to us and brings us peace through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus has provided everything that we need. And now that Jesus has come, he came with this time-space thing that we're in right now. We look at time. We follow time. We see the divisions and all the things that are taking place. But he's going to come where there is no time. But right now what he's doing is preparing us for those final days. He's going to come again in victory. But he's coming to get his bride. Now, this is where the rapture takes place. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13. We've talked about it before. We'll talk about it again because, folks, this is what the Scripture says. Revelation, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, chapter uh, 4 and verse 13. I would not have you not understanding, brethren concerning those who have died, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have died in Jesus. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Have you been born again? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Then I've got good news for you. Here's what's going to happen. There's coming a time when Jesus is going to step down, not onto the earth. He's going to step down in the clouds. He's coming down with the the angel with the trumpet. And he's going to blow the trumpet, and the trumpet will sound. Jesus will be standing in the clouds, and we will be summoned into his presence. And you say, well, man, that ought to turn everybody's head. The only people that will know the trumpet sounded are those who belong to the church, belong to Jesus Christ. We will be gone. The word means to snatch away. Well, we call it the rapture. Rapture is not in the Bible. But the word that he uses means to, to snatch away. So it will be taken up. Boom. And we will be brought into his presence. And there in his presence, once we're all gathered there with him, then we're going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. We will prepare our, wor- our robes for the supper that is waiting for us. Paul talks about this. Peter talks about it. John talks about it. We're not a part of the judgment of Satan's system. We're not a part of the tribulation that's going to take place. God said, I didn't bring you here to to appoint you to wrath. And his wrath is going to fall during the tribulation period. The church will be gone. We saw that in chapter 4. After these things, metatauta. What things? The church. When the church is gone, the church is never mentioned from chapter 4 to the end of the scripture. When the church is brought into the marriage supper, the church is gone. There's no reason to mention the church. It deals with the tribulation. No wrath. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus our Lord. So when we know him, we're not, we're not taken to wrath that is to come. What we ought to do is talk about we're on our way to a wedding. The church is on it. We're all of us. We're on our way to a wedding. I, I read one time. Y'all, any of you familiar with Angel Martinez? Anyway, Angel Martinez was was quite an evangelist and was years ago. But anyway, Angel Martinez said he got on a plane. He sat by a young lady, 
and they they took off and he looked over at her and he spoke to her and asked where she was going and and they were talking and she said i'm going to get married and he said really she said yeah you want to see his picture and he said i couldn't say no so i said sure i want to see his picture and said she pulled out this picture and she held it up there and said look at that isn't he the most beautiful thing you've ever seen and adrian rogers said i shook my head and said yeah yeah, he's quite a guy. And he said, that's the ugliest guy I ever saw in my life. But I couldn't say that to her. And the whole flight, he said she talked about that guy. How good looking he was. How nice he was. How he was this. How he was that. And we're going to get married. When I get there, we're going to have, get everything ready. And we're going to get married. And, and I'm, going to, I'm going to be a part of that. And then he said this. He said, I got off the plane still thinking that that guy was ugly, but you know, it'll say to pray for that little girl and the guy that, that everything will be fine. And then he said, why aren't we that way? We're going to a wedding. We're going to get married. We are the bride of Christ. So let me ask you something. When's the last time you bragged on Jesus to somebody else? I'm going to get married. You want to see a picture of him? You say, well, we don't have any pictures of Jesus. Yeah, you do. You show forth the image of Christ. What we say, what we do, how we act, the way we are, we show forth Christ. Do people know that we're on our way to a wedding? Do they know that we're going to be brought in and we're going to, uh, to be brought to the groom? Do we brag on him? Do we brag on the things that he's done for us and invite Jesus, our people, to know him? Jesus is going to come and he's going to fulfill all the promises of God. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 says that he's going to conquer death. Death. Now let me show you what happens in the rapture. The rapture takes place. Those who are living will be taken out. But folks, before that happens, and it's all going to happen at once, it's like this. The grave of those who have died in Christ are going to break open. That body is going to come forth as a spiritual body so that they can live in heaven. We are going to drop this body, and we are going to take that spiritual body, and it's all going to happen simultaneously, but the dead in Christ will rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We'll go up to him, and we will be there with him, raised in the rapture. That's not the second coming. The second coming is when Jesus steps down and the Antichrist challenges him and he steps on the Mount of Megiddo and he will destroy those armies and he will rule and he will reign and he will send those folks that, that have turned away from him. They will be condemned to hell because they did not turn their lives over to Christ. He will condemn them because they, are, they have totally uh, forgotten him and put him out of the way. He will judge all of those that will come up to him and he will cast them along with Satan into the lake of fire. Folks, Jesus gave us a spiritual kingdom, but he is coming one day to give us a visible kingdom. He's coming back and we will know him. Even so come, Lord, in the twinkling of an eye. Suddenly Jesus said, yes, Amen. I come quickly. It means suddenly. It means certainly. Jesus is going to return. He will return. You don't have any chance to change. That's it. Can't change the way you are. Can't change who you are. In fact, you don't want to, or you would have already done it. We're gone. Guess who's left behind? Good moral people are going to be left behind. I've lived good. I've done good. I've done all the good things. And yet we are left behind. Unbelievers that just turn away from him and say, I don't need him. We're going to be left behind. But the saddest part, you know who's going to be left behind? Church members. Church members. We never really accepted Christ. We just kind of got in, joined the church. We're dependent on some denomination to make a difference and to change us. Well, let me give you one little example very quickly. You remember the story of the ten virgins when the bride and groom were um, 
making all the changes and they woke them up and the ten virgins five of them had their uh, lamps full of oil and five didn't and they ran to go get some more oil and then by the time they got back the door was shut the bridegroom had come that's church members that don't trust Christ they just kind of rock along with the church and say I'm a member of the church I've never trusted Jesus but I'm a member of the church and you will be left behind Jesus is going to come he's going to come quickly he's going to come suddenly he's going to come certainly and we will all see him in Christ we're raptured we'll see him we'll be with him we will be in eternity with him we will serve him we will work we will reign We'll be so busy, we won't even know what uh, eternity is all about. We will worship, we will praise Him, all with a glorious voice. One in Him. But make no mistake, if you refuse Christ, you will see Him. He will step back down on this earth, and He will rule and reign sovereign God. Can you hear the end? All of a sudden, it's done. You ready? I pray so. Let's pray together. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, you're here this morning and you realize I've never asked Jesus to save me. I've gone through a lot of motions and I've joined a church or whatever but if you've never asked Christ into your heart I want to ask you to pray with me and you open your heart in faith not because I'm scared or afraid or whatever but open heart, or your heart in faith because Jesus is telling you it's time that you trusted me if that's what Jesus is speaking then I want you to pray with me this prayer dear father I know I'm a lost sinner I believe Jesus Christ died for me. I believe he rose again. By faith, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of all of my sin. Save me, Lord. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. If you pray that prayer with me, I want to invite you to get up from where you are. Nobody's looking. I want you to just step out and come down here, and I'll meet you here in just a minute. Maybe you want to pray that prayer. Maybe you realize, and I'm talking to moms and dads and grandparents and, and young people, when Jesus speaks to your heart and you know that I, I need Jesus, we can't be putting that off. We need to step up and step out for Jesus. And, folks, we need to start growing in the Lord. We can't do that if we just turn our attention away from Him. It's time to get serious about God because He's coming back and we don't know when. We need to be ready. Maybe you need a church home. Maybe you need to say, this is where God wants me. I'm ready to get busy and I'm ready to serve the Lord right here. You come by letter, by statement for baptism. We'll explain all that. We'll talk it. We'll, we'll work it out. You come right now. Don't, don't challenge God on this. He's coming. Are you ready? If not, you come up here and let's get ready for Jesus when he comes again. Father, you've spoken to your word. Bless now this invitation. Help us not to be afraid. Help us not to be ashamed. Help us not to stand in pride and arrogance. But Father, when we know that there's a need, we step out and let you meet that need. We come to you, Father. Touch us, change us, give us boldness and victory. In Jesus' name, as we stand together and as we sing, I invite you to come. Right now, you come. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Savior waits, Why waits for you. you Moms, dads, families. Would you 
come. There's nothing in he this waits to receive world us. to keep you This is the day of salvation. This is the time. We don't know when God's time is. So come to him. Come now. Come quickly. Find him here now. Time after time. That time's going to run out. Don't delay. Turn loose of the pew. Say it's time. Step out. Let God make the difference. Come. Come now. Come on. That's what he wants. Are you ready? Are you willing? He wants to come into your heart. He wants to come into your life. Let's be obedient to him. The Savior, my friend. I'm coming, You'll John. Find his arms Come, Lord. Open wide. What does that mean to you? Are you ready? Receive him and all of we don't have to be ashamed. We just need to step out and say, I need Jesus. Heart, I want to serve him. I want to grow. You come. Time after time, time, he's waiting for you. He has waited before. Don't let Satan beat you. Don't let him stop you. Come. To see if you're willing to open the door. So glad that you were here. Thank you for being a part of this service this morning. Don't forget tonight at 5 o'clock we're going to worship together. Come and join us again. And let's, let's worship our Lord. This is his day. And let's give him uh, what he's asked of us. It's just one-seventh of our time. That's all he asks. Come and be with us tonight. You'll be home before the sun goes down. So you come and be a part of that. Don't forget Wednesday we study the word together. Uh, come and share that time with us. We have a great time in studying uh, the Lord. Don't forget to pray for our schools and pray for our systems and all that's going on. Let's just trust God uh, to give us victory through this year so you keep praying and lifting them to the Lord. Thank you so much for being here. Guests, don't get away quickly. Let us know who you are and greet you in the name of the Lord. What else we got? See it? Let's join hands across the auditorium. Let's sing together. Love somebody in the name of the Lord. Be a witness every day. Let the love of Christ come shining through as you travel on your way. Oh, let us be a beacon in the darkness of the world, shining with the light of Jesus' light. Set our souls afire and fill us with your power. Shower us with blessings from above.